I'm Natalie Brunel for Bitcoin Magazine, and we are talking the highly anticipated Taproot. Bitcoin is about to undergo a major upgrade to its protocol, Taproot, setting the stage for more functionality on the Bitcoin network. Okay, so what is Taproot? It is a soft fork upgrade to the Bitcoin protocol, and it's not just a single update. It actually bundles a set of important improvements known as Bitcoin Improvement Protocols, or BIPs. A Bitcoin Improvement Protocol is essentially a formalized system that tweaks the current network programming and is adopted by the community through a consensus of the miners. Now, if you were around the Bitcoin community back in 2017, you might remember SegWit. That was the last big update to Bitcoin that helped BTC scale and enabled the launch of the Lightning Network. A lot of people are excited about Taproot because it aims to make transactions cheaper, more efficient, and more private. It can also unlock the potential of smart contracts on Bitcoin because right now smart Smart contracts, increase transaction fees, and the data size that needs to be processed. Okay, so one way that Taproot makes the network more efficient and private is by shifting from something called the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm to the Schnorr signature algorithm. That might have all sounded like word salad, but what you really need to know about Schnorr is that multiple transactions with a Bitcoin wallet don't need to show up separately. They can be hashed together and assigned a unique key. Schnorr will essentially make simple transactions indistinguishable from ones that are more complex and comprised of multiple signatures. This is going to be extremely helpful in stream streamlining applications where multiple parties are transacting with one wallet. Taproot will also help reduce costs. The upgrade utilizes a system called the Merkleized Alternative Script Trees, or MAST. Now with this, conditions placed on a transaction can be condensed and hashed into one script, meaning that they take up less data and thus have lower transaction fees. And of course, lower fees mean more adoption and utility. And one last note on privacy, Taproot also aims to make it more difficult to track transactions based on public wallet addresses. With the upgrade, you can still see what transactions have happened, but it won't be as easy to see who is sending Bitcoin and to where. Now, I'm not the most technical person when it comes to Bitcoin's programming, so for some help, I brought in Bitcoin core contributor, expert, and author, Jimmy Song. All right, Jimmy, thanks so much for, for joining me. How excited are you about this Taproot upgrade? Uh, pretty excited, but you know, like let's not get our hopes up that it's going to all be on the network at immediately the same time. A lot of wallet providers have yet to integrate Taproot, so it's going to take a little bit of time and uh, the benefits will be years out from now, not like completely immediately, although there are certain things that you can you'll be able to see uh, very quickly. Okay, so people who are familiar with the space, they remember maybe the last upgrade, which was SegWit in 2017. How did we get to this point right now? Can you provide a little bit of history and context? Uh, yeah, so uh, Greg Maxwell actually uh, wrote to the mailing list a while back, I think shortly after he quit Blockstream, about his proposal Taproot, and then he uh, you know, followed it up like the next day with Graftroot. But this idea that you can have um, a single key and multiple keys like sort of combined, right now we have two different types of addresses for single key locked um, and multi-sig. Multi uh, what Taproot does is it puts it all under one uh, sort of type of address. So you get more privacy as far as whether it's single key locked or multi-key locked. Now, I'm not the most technical person, but everything that I'm reading about Taproot, it indicates that this would make things cheaper, more efficient, and essentially faster and, and offer more privacy. So can you talk to a couple of those points? How does Taproot make things first more private on the blockchain? Yeah, so uh, it's uh, part of it is what I just told you about how it uh, right now you have pay to uh, witness script hash and pay to witness pub key hash. And you can tell the difference by looking at how long the addresses are. So if it's a, an especially long BEC32 address, um, those are multi-sig or something more interesting than uh, you know, a BEC32 address that's, uh, that's shorter, those are single key locks. So you can tell right away almost uh, by, uh, by looking at the address, whether or not it's single sig or multi-sig. And we used to have that back in uh, uh, you know, pre-segwit with you know, the addresses that start with a one versus the addresses that start with a three. Uh, the ones that start with a one are single key lock, the other ones are three. Um, Taproot gets rid of this distinction basically by having uh, you know, uh, one, one, uh, both of them combined to one single type of address. So that's, uh, that, that gives you some level of privacy, but more than that, um, with uh, the current iteration of script, uh, what, what you have to have is you have to reveal every condition that 
uh, is possible to reveal uh, to spend that particular output. So you may have three different conditions, right? Two of three, or after a time lock, this person, or after an additional time lock, this person. Um, and you can have all three conditions, and you're really only spending out of one of them, but you're forced to reveal the entire thing. With Taproot, you only reveal the thing that you're spending with, and the other two sort of like stay there, and that way you don't reveal any information. So it gives you additional privacy in that regard as well. Okay, I'm going to move on to the other points, but first I'm going to give you a challenge because I know you're 10 times smarter than me. Dumb this down for someone who's watching who doesn't even understand, you know, what a multi-sig is or how these are sort of like fingerprints on the network. Like dumb this down to, you know, fifth grade level. Hmm. Um, I would say that um, no one can tell what kind of lock you have on your house, something like that. Um, and you can have lots of different types of locks. And it used to be that one type of lock was very easy to identify and another type of lock was very hard to identify. Now they're both like one type of lock. So it's, it's hard to tell basically um, how, how your house is locked and that gives you more security. Perfect. I love that. Okay. How about cheaper? Why does this make transactions cheaper? I know a lot of people are concerned with just fees on, on the actual blockchain. Mm. Yeah, so essentially what it what it comes down to is that it uses less bytes um, in certain kinds of cases. Uh, right now for multi-sig, it does use a lot of bytes because if you're doing like three of five multi-sig or something like that, you have to have three signatures and five public keys that are revealed when at the time of spend. And signatures are pretty big. Um, they're right now about 71 bytes or 72 bytes each. So that like times three is like 220 bytes or something like that. Um, and pub keys are about 33 bytes each. And so you multiply that, that's 150 bytes, 150 plus 210, that's like three, 360. A normal single SIG uh, output uh, or input is like uh, 100 bytes or something like that. So it's a, it's a significant penalty for the people that are doing multi-SIG. So we, we take some of that away by uh, optimizing on the signature format. So instead of 71 bytes, it goes down to 64 bytes. Instead of 33 bytes, we go down to 32 bytes. So that definitely um, you know, adds little bits here and there and does make it a little bit cheaper because you're taking up less space on the blockchain. And therefore you can pay cheaper fees. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the other stuff is um, like a lot of that with Taproot, when you have like three conditions, you have to reveal all three conditions and that's a lot of data. Uh, although, you know, like depending on the number of conditions and how, how many you, you, you have, um, it depends on, uh, you know, how, how much you end up revealing. So it can be cheaper in certain types of use cases. Um, per paradoxically, in some others, uh, you're going to pay a little bit more because it's going to actually uh, require a little more block space. But overall, it's, a, it's an efficiency gain because we've changed up the formats of certain things. Okay, well, digging a little bit more into efficiency, I know that this could also unlock the potential of smart contracts. And right now, smart contracts on Bitcoin are not very efficient. So how could this change the game and make it maybe potentially even compete more with Ethereum? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think smart contracts on Bitcoin are just fine. And we, we've been able to do lots of things. It's just harder to reason about uh, because of the sort of quirks of the language script and um, you know, thinking in sort of like a stack-based way doesn't come naturally to people. Um, I, I, I think with something like Taproot, it makes it a lot easier to understand because you have, you know, n different conditions. So here are the five different conditions for which I want to unlock this uh, output. So you can say, all right, uh, three of three of these people, or two of three plus some amount of time passing, or you know, one of three with this amount of time passing and so on. And you can have all of these conditions sort of like outlined very easily. Um, and so it makes uh, composability is what uh, what we would call it uh, as developers. Uh, composability of the smart contract gets easier because of Taproot. Um, and that's, uh, that's something that uh, admittedly, I think, uh, Ethereum has a little bit more of, they have a lot more tooling around that because, uh, you know, obviously smart contracts and Turing completeness and all that, it, it's a lot more vulnerable. So composability becomes a very important issue on, on, on that platform. Um, I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, competing with what Ethereum is doing is anything that we really want to be doing on Bitcoin. Um, I think that is kind of up for debate, though, you know, certainly people are trying to do that. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it does allow for developers to make smart contracts in an easier way. It's a lot easier to reason about. 
about and probably will be reflected in the user interfaces that people are going to see post Taproot when it's all integrated. Awesome. Well, and just to start to wrap up, how difficult is it to, to have one of these upgrades be accepted by a consensus of the miners? Is it easy? Uh, well, depends on what you mean by easy, but uh, like it, it was much easier than last time, let's just say that, but it wasn't, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it takes a lot of work from a lot of different people and, you know, just getting it to the point where miners uh, can signal readiness and so on, um, you know, it is a tremendous amount of work. And this is uh, many years of research and development and, uh, you know, back and forth and, uh, reviews and, uh, you know, modeling of like different uh, game theory scenarios and things like that, um, that, that brought us to this point. So we should be very grateful uh, for, you know, this upgrade that, uh, that we're about to get that will probably change a lot of the way people um, do wallets. So I expect, I fully expect in a few years time that every wallet will have a natural backup where, you have three of three of your friends. If they help you out, you could uh, you your your stuff is always backed up, and that way, um, you know, even if you lose your phone wallet or something like that, having this backup is uh, a means to recover all of your funds. So stuff like that um, that you get for free using Taproot. Th those are the UI improvements or user experience improvements that I look forward to seeing. Wow. Okay. Well, this is, it's always exciting to see developments with the Bitcoin network. So just last question, what are, what are some questions that you have? What are you going to be looking for with this upgrade or what are you most excited about? Uh, well, I, I, I'm more, most excited about sort of the user experience upgrades that I think are, are going to be there, but that, that's going to take some time because uh, the wallet developers have to learn all this stuff, right? Like we're, we're human well, um, and you know, they're, they're going to have to learn all of the taff leaf and, uh, you know, syntax and all that, write the libraries and make it all, uh, you know, integrated into uh, their wallets. Uh, they have to add like BEC32M format, which is a new format for uh, addresses now and make sure that it passes. But there's a lot of work ahead. And, um, you know, they, just because it's available doesn't mean that that work is done. There are certain wallets that have sort of done this work beforehand and have been testing it on testnet over the past few weeks, but there are others that are just not going to do it until there's enough demand or enough benefit seen by users to do it. So it's going to take a few years, um, but yeah, rest assured, this is going to be an interesting upgrade and will give a lot more uh, fail safes for sort of like users shooting themselves in the foot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being our programming expert. And guys, make sure to follow Jimmy Song. Yep.